Hey guys, my name is Cassie. Welcome back to another video. If you are new to my channel, I am the creator of makingtimeforgiggles.com, which is a website dedicated to helping moms make life simple. So be sure to subscribe down below if you would like to see more videos like this one and hop over to the website and check that out if you want to learn more about me and what it is that I do. In this video, we are talking about how to create a simple routine for new moms. Now routines and schedules can be a little bit controversial. A lot of people think that you are either such a schedule fanatic that you are absolutely miserable if you aren't sticking to it to a T and you basically become a slave to your schedule. While other people think it is best to have no schedule at all and to just kind of let the kids decide what happens at what point during the day. And I don't feel like either of these extremes is best for moms or for kids. So what I tried to do when I was creating my daily routine for my girls is find a happy medium between the two. So in this video, I'm going to show you why I think routines are so helpful for moms. I'm going to show you how to create your own and I'm going to show you my routines from when I had a newborn and from when I had a four to six month old. Let's go ahead and get started on why I think it is so valuable to have some sort of routine or schedule in your daily life. The first reason I think routines are awesome is that they make you so much more confident as a mom. When you hear your baby crying and you have a predictable routine, all of the guesswork is taken out. You don't have to wonder if they are hungry or if they are tired or if they need changed. You know exactly why they are crying, at least most of the time, because you know where you're at in your routine. Whereas if you don't have any sort of schedule, every cry becomes a guessing game and you just have to keep trying new things until you eventually figure out what it is they actually need. The second reason that I love routines is it makes you more confident when you are with other people. When you are a new mom, almost everybody has some sort of advice for you and they all think that they know what it means when your baby cries and almost every time they think it means that your baby is hungry. But when you have your routine and you know if that's a tired cry or if it is a hungry cry or if they're just crying because they need their diaper changed, it can give you a lot more confidence when you are dealing with other people who think they know your baby better than you do. I had so many people tell me when my first daughter was born, oh, she's hungry, she's crying. And I was able to say, no, she's not. She's actually just tired because this is her nap time. And I could put her down or I could put her in her car seat if we were out and about and she would go to sleep and take a nap. And I wasn't constantly trying to guess and figure out what was wrong, especially when I was under pressure from other people to get my baby to stop crying. The third reason I think all moms need a schedule is it can actually help your baby sleep better. Most sleep experts agree that having a predictable daily routine leads to better daytime sleep at naps and better sleep at night. Now, I wish I could tell you that there's just one book with an amazing schedule that will solve all of your sleep problems, but Unfortunately, there isn't. I haven't found one single book that combines everything you need to get your child to sleep well. When I was a nanny, I read almost every sleep book that I could get my hands on because I had one little guy in particular who did not like to sleep. But what we found is if we combined the principles in three different books, it worked really well for him. And that also helped me grow and change the schedule as he grew and his needs changed as well. So I will show you those books real quickly in case you want to check them out for more details on this topic. The first one that I highly recommend for anyone who has a newborn zero to 12 weeks old is On Becoming Baby Wise. And this is basically a handbook. It tells you exactly what you need to do, the schedule you need to have, if you want to have your child sleeping through the night very young. Like I said, I've used this book for kids that I have nannied for and for my own kids and it has worked out really well. Then as the kids get older, I recommend reading a book called Bringing Up Babe. And this book is not a textbook by any means. It is more of a story. It is written by a woman who moved to France and realized that all the French kids were eating well and sleeping well. And basically she set out to crack the code. So it's a really fun read, but it also has some really great gems along the way for how to teach your kids to sleep better. And the third book that I absolutely love is called The Dream Sleeper. And I recommend that book from about ages 12 weeks up to two to three years. I wish I could show you my copy, but I think I loaned it to somebody else and I'm not exactly sure who. So I will pop it in the description down below if you want to check that book out. But all three of those books are really great approaches to setting up a daily schedule that will help your child sleep longer and better at night. 
And the next reason that I love having a schedule is it actually helps your kids eat better. When kids snack all throughout the day, they don't tend to eat very well at mealtimes. And even if you can get them to take a few bites, it typically isn't the healthiest food that they are willing to eat because they aren't that hungry. So if you can have specific meal times for your kids, even from a very young age, it teaches them that it's okay to be hungry. And it also teaches them that these are the times that you fill up your stomach and get full. And if you want more information about how to set up your routine specifically so that your children will learn to eat well, again, Bringing Up Babay is an awesome resource for this. And my other favorite book on teaching kids to eat well is called French Kids Eat Everything, which is a very similar book to Bringing Up Babay, somebody else that moved to France and realized that all the other kids were eating really well at mealtimes and basically just wanted to figure out how to do that for her own kids. And the last reason that I think everyone should have a routine is that it actually makes it easier for those days when you don't have a routine. This one is kind of ironic to me because we had a lot of people tell us before we had kids, don't stick to a schedule or your kids will never be able to go off the schedule and you'll be a slave to the schedule and it will make your life so much more difficult. But we've actually found the opposite to be true. We have found that our kids are very flexible on the days when we do go off the schedule. So if there are days when we are hiking and we end up eating lunch later, or if we end up going out to brunch and brunch ends up being two or three hours later than their normal breakfast time, they're able to wait because they're used to waiting for meals. And they know that when the food is available, we will give it to them. Now, I will say this does work best if you have a weekly rhythm that you tend to follow. I talk a lot more about that in this video here, but the gist of it is to have some simple days where your kids can just have their normal routine in between days that are busier and maybe a little more hectic as far as the schedule goes. All right, now we are going to go over how you can create your own customized routine. And I'm going to go ahead and use the newborn routine that I used when my girls were little, just because I already know it, and that's an easy one to work with. So the first thing that I'm going to do is write in the approximate times that they ate all of their little meals during the day. Okay, so I wrote in eight, 11, two, five, and eight. And that is because we were on the three hour feed schedule, which is recommended in Baby Wise. And again, I highly recommend this if you do want your kids to be good little sleepers. Now these numbers for us were approximate times. We basically gave the girls an hour when they could wake up during between seven and eight. And some days they would wake up closer to seven and some days they would wake up closer to eight. And it wasn't a huge deal for us because I knew that I was going to be a stay-at-home mom when they were born and I wasn't going to have to get them out of the house every day at a certain time. So I was perfectly fine letting them sleep a little longer some days and having them get up earlier others. If you know that you will be going back to work after you are done with maternity leave, then you may want to go ahead and start getting them up at the same time every day and just kind of help them set that internal clock. Now, once you have your feeding times in, the next thing that you're going to do is write in the nap times. And for little ones, there will be a nap in between each feeding. So like I said, for the real little ones, there will be a nap in between each feeding session. And typically your nap will be about two hours at this age. So if you are feeding them at eight, they will nap from nine to 11 and will have a little bit of awake time, hopefully between their feeding and their nap time. The second nap will be from 12 to two. The third one will be from three to five. And often they will need a last little cat nap of the day from 6.30 to 7.30 or so. Now each one of these beginning of the feeds to the end of nap time is one block. So you can see if you are using the newborn three hour schedule that you would be having five blocks in your day. And once you have these blocks set, you can start building in your daily routine. So the first thing that I'm going to do is write in which blocks my laundry routine will be happening in. Because if you're not careful, especially as a new mom, laundry can really pile up on you. And before you know it, you have no clean clothes for you or the baby and especially if you're doing cloth diapers, 
You have to be on top of the laundry and make sure you're getting something done just about every day. So what I did when I was a new mom and I still do now is I start the laundry before we even come downstairs for breakfast since the laundry room is right next to my girl's room and it just makes it a really easy thing to do right after we get them up in the morning. So I'm going to go ahead and write in in block one, start the laundry. Then in block two, I am going to switch the laundry from the washer into the dryer. And in block three, I will fold the laundry and put it away. And if you wanna see my full video on how to solve the laundry problem, you can check out this video right here. Now the next thing that I'm going to put into my schedule is which block I'm going to do my cleaning in. I like to do a little bit of cleaning every day as opposed to doing a lot of cleaning on one day. It just feels a little bit easier to me. So since I like to get my chores out of the way first thing, I'm gonna put cleaning into block one. The next thing that I'm going to put into this routine is when I'm going to do my meal prep. You know that it's really hard to make food while you are carrying a baby. So I found it was a lot easier to do my meal prep earlier in the day during one of the naps as opposed to in the evening because if your kids are anything like mine, your evenings are filled with a lot of fussiness. Both of our girls were just cranky in the evenings and wanted to be held a lot, weren't happy when they were put down, and it just made it really stressful if I was trying to cook a meal at that point. So typically what I did when our girls were that little is I would do my meal prep during their third nap of the day. So between three and 5 p.m. Now the next thing that I'm going to put in my daily routine is which block will be for getting out of the house, going grocery shopping, taking the baby for a walk, or doing doctor's and dentist appointments. I like having this figured out ahead of time so that when I am needing to make an appointment, I know exactly what time works for me. And I'm actually thinking that I may switch. I know I put the cleaning in the first block of the day, but when both of my girls were little, it worked much better for us to get appointments out of the way first thing if we had them. And I can still do the cleaning during that block if we are at home, but I can easily move the cleaning down here and use this as our out and about block. Now the last thing that I like to put in my daily routine is when I am going to work out because working out and staying fit is really important to me and I know if I don't write it down and figure out exactly when it's going to happen, it's not going to happen. So as I'm looking at this schedule, I think it makes the most sense to put it into the second block of the day because if you just have a newborn at home, you probably don't need to be cleaning for two hours every single day. And I think you would have plenty of time to get your cleaning done in maybe half an hour and then do a workout in another half an hour and then get cleaned up in another half an hour and have plenty of time to get all of that in while your baby is sleeping. Now you may notice on this routine, I do not have anything about a morning routine. And that's because when my kids were that little and I was getting up and feeding them at night, I just needed every bit of sleep that I could get. Now, if you really need that time alone and you want to have a good morning routine, go for it. But during this point in my life, my only morning routine was brushing my teeth and putting on real person clothes, which most days was yoga pants and a comfy shirt. Now I'm going to show you what our daily routine looked like from about six months to about 12 to 18 months. And I say six months because it's kind of a transition between four to six months. You're dropping naps, and it's not necessarily just perfectly neat and nice all the time. Sometimes they need an extra nap, and sometimes they drop it, and they're just going back and forth a little bit, figuring things out. So plan to be flexible during that time. But for us, from about six months on, they were on a very consistent schedule. And that schedule consisted of about four hour blocks, which is what is recommended in bringing up a bay and is also talked about in The Dream Sleeper. So again, my first step is what times are the feedings going to be? So for us, those time slots were eight, noon, four, and eight. Those were their feeding times during the day. And about six months, we started introducing solid foods to them. So that routine would consist of me either nursing or bottle feeding them, and then following that with solid food. That is what their pediatrician suggested to me so that you're making sure they're still getting all the calories that they can from the milk, but at the same time, you're also introducing the food. Now, by the time the girls were about six months old, they were down to just two naps a day. Again, they had been gradually dropping them from four to six months. Now, sometimes my second daughter would need another little evening nap. 
She wouldn't always go to sleep, but she would get really fussy and we found if we just put her down and let her have some alone time in her crib, she would calm right down and just babble to herself up there. So some babies just need that quiet time in the evenings and some keep their third nap a lot longer. I have some friends who kept three naps until their babies were nine months old. So it depends a little bit on your baby and their sleep needs, but I'm just gonna do this as if I were using it and based on our experience with the naps. So for us, this was a 10 to noon morning nap and a two to four afternoon nap with a 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. optional nap. Now again, just like with the newborn schedule, each of these start of the feeds to end of the nap is considered one block for us. So now the blocks are a little bit longer. You have more hours in each block to do things with, but I just kept the blocks pretty much the same for the purpose of this example. In my morning block, I am starting the laundry and this is still our out and about block because if I have to skip a nap, I want it to be done in the morning since I know that this afternoon nap is the one that is going to be sticking with us for as long as I can get it to stick. So I wanted from the start this to be the nap that we are always home in our beds for. In my second block of the day is switching the laundry and again, the cleaning time along with working out and showering. Like I said though, these blocks are a little bit bigger. So there is a good chance that I could put my cleaning in my first block if I wanted to and get that done and out of the way. And then maybe have some time in the second block, again, if I wanted to, to work on a side hustle or something like that. In my third block of the day it is still folding laundry and still meal prepping. Although this isn't always while they are asleep now. By the time our girls were about six months old, they started to be able to play by themselves a little bit more in the evening. I could put them down and just getting them used to being able to entertain themselves a little bit while I prepared the meals. So there you have it. That is why you should have a routine how to set up your own routine, and some examples of routines that we used when our girls were little. Now I am going to put the blog post that goes along with this video in the description down below because I feel like it's a little bit easier if you can see the schedule or the routine laid out all in one spot. I will also put in that article the schedule that we used when we had a toddler and a newborn. So be sure to check that out if that would be helpful for you as well. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and found it helpful so more people can find it. And let me know down in the comments below what you think of all this. Do you think that you will work better with a rigid schedule where everything is planned out to the minute and you stick with it most days of the week? Or do you think you'll work better with a routine that is a little bit more flexible like I described in this video? Again, I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about making mom life simple. So be sure to subscribe down below and ring the bell next to it to be notified when the next video comes out. I'll see you on the next one.